Um, my story starts off on June 8, 2009. It was, uh, I just finished my freshman year of high school. I was getting ready to begin my summer. You know, uh, most of my summer I spend them in my grandma's house. I have a lot of family that lives there. If you guys know Mexican families, a lot, you know, they're, they're really attached. They don't like to move out when they have a lot of siblings. So I have a lot of cousins, aunts, uncles that all live there. And it was just a typical day, you know, start off my summer with my cousin. His name was Andy. He was three years older than me. So at the time he was 18, I was 15. And you know, we had a normal, start off normal day, had breakfast, lunch, hanging out. And then around one o'clock he asked, do you want to go play basketball? I said, sure, why not? We always go play ball around the local parks, play some pickups. And then a little at the time that I know he was actually gang banging. He just recently joined the gang about the seven months prior to this event. And about halfway to the park, you know, we get, we realized, I, I hear a distinctive noise behind us saying, and I'm like, okay, I don't think much of it. And I start walking, I turn around and I see this black, this black Honda Accord with tinted windows and you can't really see much into it. And my cousin, he starts panicking. He starts fidgeting, he starts moving around really fast. He doesn't know what's going on. And I'm, I'm right there like, like, chill out, bro. Like, what's going on, man? And he doesn't want to tell me what's going on. He starts panicking. He starts getting nervous. And he goes, he finally tells me, I think that might be a gang I had some problems with in high school. And at that point now, I'm like, oh shit, you know, like my stomach starts turning, I'm like, okay, this could be bad, this could be bad. So we start walking a little bit faster and faster, and all of a sudden, you just hear the four doors open, and we see four men pop out of the car, and his first instincts, he was really tall and skinny, so he just, he says, run. If you guys see, I'm kind of big, you know, back then, you can imagine I was a lot shorter, a lot wider, so mm -hmm. my space to run was a little bit limited. So I tried my, my fastest, he was like a rap, he got over the fence, he made it, he was gone, I, had, I don't know where he went. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm getting nervous, I get about halfway up the fence, and I just feel this arm pull me, by, pull me back in my shirt, and my first, I just get the concrete, and I, have, I, I feel this initial crack, and I'm just going fetal position, and for about a minute, a minute and a half, I'm probably the worst minute of my life, just stomping, just stomping and kicking and hitting it. And the only reason they stopped was I hear from a distance, my grandmother, she let out a fierce cry, like she was, just, she scared them off. And all of a sudden, two mistakes that the men made were, two of them lived a couple blocks away, so they just tried to run to one of their houses, the other two got in the car and left. So the only reason she knew I was there was one of the neighbors had recognized me and she called the police and called my grandmother right after, said, hey, he needs some help. So by the time the police got there, they were able to locate the two that lived close by and they arrested them with assault on a minor. And the other two, they got in the car and took off and I had no whereabouts. So by the time I got to the hospital, my grandma took me how to get about three staples in the back of my head. I get six stitches around my eyebrow, they gashed it right open. I had two broken ribs and I had plenty of cuts, scars, bruises everywhere. And um, I, got, I got home finally and I see my cousin on the couch and the first thing I smell when I walk in, I smell marijuana and I'm like thinking, you left me for your problems to go get high with your friends. And thinking he wasn't doing anything of it, I started feeling automatic resentment towards him and I started just being furious thinking, wow, he just did that. Thinking nothing of it, you know, he, later that night I found out he, I just went home that night, you know, try to sleep it off. I found out the next morning he snuck out that night with his gang. They located the other black Honda Accord and my cousin and his friends, he, they actually, they murdered one of them, Antonio Valdez. He was, my cousin was the gunman and he was convicted of that about a week later. And the other man, they beat about half to death. They beat him actually worse than they did to me. And for a week he was hiding they finally found him and he was convicted and he's, right now he's currently serving life in prison. And you know, even though their actions don't, I don't think they, he should have done, acted upon what happened and you know, thinking he sacrificed his whole life, you know, basically he gave it all away for one, one fight that was like resolved, you know, I ended up being safe and he just, he's in prison right now and, and I haven't seen him in, in about three years. I still have yet to confront him about what has happened. And thinking, you know, if my grandmother wasn't there, you know, I don't even think I'd be able to hear to deliver this speech to you guys because without her, I don't think they had no motive to stop. They, they don't know who I was and I don't know who they were, so there was no reason for them to stop. So I still have yet to visit my cousin in prison and to confront him about what had happened. So without my guardian angel, I do not think I could give this speech and that was probably the scariest day of my life. Thank you.